Now, you probably noticed I don't feel about that war the way we were told we were supposed to feel about that war, the way we were ordered and instructed by the United States government to feel about that war. You see, I tell you, my mind doesn't work that way. I got this real moron thing I do, it's called thinking. <laughs> And I'm not a very good American because I like to form my own opinions. Let's go. Welcome back, thought criminals, free thinkers, in today's tempest of turmoil as the globe trembles under the thunder of artillery in Israel, Gaza, Ukraine, and the endless abyss of Iraq. There lurks a sinister synergy between the orchestrators of obliteration and the puppeteers of our purses. And Max Kaiser has been a sentinel in the financial wilderness for a long time, beckoning us to heed the call of Bitcoin. We got a lot to cover. Let's get it. The bankers are constantly creating problems. They're like arsonists. They set a house on fire, then they come around to try to put out the fire and pick up a reward. So you can't believe a word coming out of their mouth. All right, you gotta love this tweet from Kaiser here. Watching fiat money cucks blow themselves up amuses me. 220K is in play. And when we see these institutions failing around us, I mean, Kaiser's elucidation isn't merely a critique. It's a call to emancipate ourselves from the shackles of this financial fiasco that uh, doesn't just pick our pockets, but picks battlefields all across the world. Well, it's no secret that... Uh... Corporations in the U.S. like Coca-Cola, of course, created the Nazi uh, beverage Fanta, Orange Fanta, which was for Nazis. IBM was responsible for all the calculation of all the serial numbers that was used to tag the prisoners that ended up in the concentration camp. So American J.P. Morgan was playing both sides of the, of the war at that time, uh, just like J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs play both sides of the war uh, today. They're financing the mercenaries and the uh, terrorists in various countries, just like they're financing the bonuses on Wall Street. They, they're arbitrageurs. They have no sovereignty. They have no country of what they're affiliated with. They're amoral. They're just... They're just uh, Unix uh, plowing through the cyberspace of money looking for, you know, like like a sloth looking like a slug looking for salt. They're just uh, they're not even human. There's old run the banks dropped a very good clip right here. I think you guys will enjoy. And this is a point we try to drive home in Bitcoin all the time. It isn't right versus left. That is somewhat of an illusion. I mean, it's just freedom versus tyranny. It's all of us versus the state and all these uh, little battles that they they try to push out into the people to divide people. It's all part of a grand scheme so they can continue printing money and uh, waging wars all across the world. Let's roll this clip and take a look at how the left-right illusion has got people bagged and tagged. But we, we can take a look around and from the Bitcoin movement, the freedom movement, all these things, there are signs all over the world that there is this kind of great awakening, this movement towards the adoption of freedom and Bitcoin. And that is, I mean, the pendulum swings. Tyranny went so far, so aggressive these past few years that the natural reaction, right? is coming, but let's check it out. I hope everyone's pretty aware at this point that there are not two parties. There is not a Republican and Democrat, not in any way that, that we, we would have managed or a lot of our relatives that have passed away in past times had. We have a uniparty in Washington, D.C., a uniparty that is really controlled by a bunch of think tanks, a bunch of lobbyists, a bunch of foreign powers, including the CCP and other nations. They are controlled by a billionaire trillionaire class, an oligarchy, an American oligarchy elitist class that owns all of our politicians and selects them from the start. And until we stop dividing ourselves with the illusion of choice, which is all it is at this point, then we will never ever be able to fight this battle because they will keep us divided every way they can. I don't know, but after watching that, I have this strange feeling maybe she's been tuning into Simply Bitcoin, but she nails it. All right, take a look at this meme from BTC Therapist. The battle is indeed just beginning. A financial revolution is beckoning and that promises to muzzle all these merchants of menace. And I love the graphic. I mean, just from this little nothing to now, look where we are. It's so prophetic going back to the Genesis block and we've added... Oh Almost a trillion dollars of debt in just a month. The war drums are pounding. So with all this going on, we can see the U.S. national debt, 33.5. I think it may be 33.6. That thing is rising like crazy. But Dylan LeClaire kind of breaks down as we take a look at the geopolitical fires being lit all over the place. You know, maybe some inconvenient truths here, but how war happens when debt levels burst. Really connecting the BTC therapist meme right here. Let's check it out. What happens when these debt debt bubbles bursts, right? Like on a similar question, is it a coincidence that world wars happen when debt levels get to the 
you know, to the tipping point, 120%, 140%, world war currency reset, yeah. reestablish it, financial oppression, right? Mm -hmm. Like, is that a coincidence? Is it a coincidence that, you know, after 11, 12 years of QE, zero rates, money printing around the planet, the yield curve inverts, the repo market blows up, mm -hmm. and COVID comes out of nowhere. Right. And like, am I a conspiracy theorist for that, for saying, or suggesting such a thing? Oh, maybe not, but it, it, it lined up really well, mm -hmm. right? And they printed trillions of dollars. BlackRock comes out in 2019 and says, well, in the next in the next recession, in the next downturn, there's going to need to be need to be direct payments to households and businesses to keep this this thing going. Uh -huh. And then they, you know, within a year, tens of trillions of dollars are printed. Yeah. So, you know, is that a cause and effect, or is this just the the natural order of of how these systems, you know, try to survive into their last, you know, diet in in, in a dying state? Mm -hmm. That's that's a rabbit hole in of it. Yeah, I mean, this is beautiful here. The contrast couldn't be starker. Bitcoin's ethos of value creation versus the relentless ravages of war. And I'm going to go ahead and play this clip. Max Kaiser breaks this down in perfect fashion. Fiat money breeds violence. Now, fiat money breeds violence. Fiat money breeds war. Bitcoin monetizes peace and love. And I explain why that is because it's unconfiscatable so no matter how much coercion you attempt or violence you cannot get my bitcoin so you have to come at me with something different you have to come out with something that i want in exchange for my bitcoin in a peaceful way so uh, violence and uh, war are demonetized by bitcoin so yeah. once again el salvador being a small country really it doesn't have a a, 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 a um, you know military uh, presence uh, really uh, to match uh, the United States or China, but in this in this world in this paradigm in a Bitcoin standard world, that's actually a liability. Think about the U.S. spends now 1.5 trillion dollars a year on the Pentagon to defend the U.S. dollar. Well, if the U.S. dollar is no longer world reserve currency and it's being inflated away to zero, you're just, you're still spending 1.5 trillion dollars to defend this absolute worthless piece of paper. And that's uh, about half of all the tax receipts you collect in the United States. So half of all the tax receipts collected go into defending the US dollar visa Via, via the Pentagon, and all that is completely becoming worthless. You know, the recent cataclysms in Gaza and Israel aren't just a testament to the tinderbox that is geopolitics, but it is a glaring indictment of a system that funds fury with the fruits of our labor. We're about to see something humans have never seen before in the history of money and the history of our species. A monetization of love and a demonetization of hate. Think about the U.S. dollar for a second. Paul Krugman, who's at the New York Times, he writes about economics and finance. He was asked once, well, you know, nothing backs the U.S. dollar, Paul. He said, no, in fact, the U.S. dollar is backed. It's backed by men with guns. Think about that for a second. The U.S. dollar is backed by men with guns. This stuff, dollars, greenbacks, here's a 20, here's a 5. This represents violence. This represents hatred. It's what's backed hatred. The U.S. military is more than half of all the tax dollars we pay in America, multi-trillion dollar budget, 500 military bases around the world. When Iraq decided they wanted to price their oil in something other than dollars, we killed 500 innocent civilians, children, 500,000. When uh, Gaddafi said, hey, we're going to uh, maybe bring in a pan-African gold-backed currency and get out of the dollar, he was uh, killed by U.S. military forces. Uh, this, is, this, is the, this is the story of the dollar. This is, this is garbage. This is shit. This is the kind of shit that you don't ever want to see. You know, This is very cathartic. You need to perform an exorcism on your currency. You need to release the devil. Out, devil! Out! Pestilence! The kind of garbage. Nothing but paper and an illusion that somehow this is going to keep you safe in a world of infinite inflation. I can guarantee you a few things. Number one, paper money is guaranteed, mathematically guaranteed, to lose purchasing power forever. It will never, ever gain purchasing power. Number two, Bitcoin is mathematically guaranteed to always increase purchasing power. Mathematically guaranteed to 
to always increase purchasing power forever. Is it volatile? Sure. But I ask you, would you accept a little volatility in Bitcoin with a guarantee of purchasing power over time? Or would you rather have the US dollar or some other fiat money that's not volatile and you're guaranteed to lose purchasing power over time. Check out this tweet from Spike Cohen. He was the VP of the Libertarian Party last year. How many of our loved ones did we lose in Iraq for all this bullshit? And the ghost of Iraq still haunts us, and it's a grotesque gala of greed, gore, corruption. I think we remember Julian Assange's revelations, the, the unveiling of the unholy alliance of the media mendacity and the martial malevolence. They are the propaganda engine. And this saga in Ukraine is just another version in the dirge of destruction, orchestrated by faceless financiers and echoed by a complicit chorus of media mouthpieces. You know, you don't really hear about peace in the mainstream media. That's not a real message they like to deliver. But let's take a look at this clip from Max Kaiser and Tucker Carlson on the Ukraine pivot point. You think the war in Ukraine was a pivot point Yeah, think in our economy? Yes. So what would explain the religious fervor with which the with Wall Street and the Democratic Party and parts of the Republican Party are backing that war. Uh, at this point, you should put the meme up of uh, Zelensky at the laundromat. Th that's the appropriate yeah. meme at this point. It's, it's pure money laundering. It, it is, right? No question. The FTX is intimately involved. Without question. It, the, the, the facts, the figures, the numbers are quite plain to see for anyone. They needed money to launder. Uh, Ukraine is where they launder it. Uh, th less than 30% of the weapons actually make it to the battlefield. It, it, it's a complete and utter disgusting incidence of, of the elites in this country ripping people off uh, and calling it something, having something to do with an agenda. It's propaganda, okay? It's propaganda. Propaganda and money laundering. A, a, cl a kleptocracy. It, all these things are colliding, Tucker. Now the fiscal farce continues, the merry-go-round of mendacity that markets mayhem to the masses. And we could take a look here. We touched on this earlier, but really let this sink in. America is in its weakest fiscal position since World War II. Can it afford another war at this time, Miss Yellen? Absolutely, the American economy is doing extremely well. Can't make this shit up. And just to verify, let's go ahead and play it. What this all means. Paul Tudor Jones, the famed investor, was on CNBC this week and he said, this is the most threatening and challenging geopolitical environment that I've ever seen. At the same time, the US is in its weakest fiscal position since World War II, with debt to GDP at 122%. Can, can America, can the West afford another war at this time? I, I think the answer is absolutely. Um, America can certainly afford to stand with Israel and to support Israel's military needs. and. We also can and must support Ukraine in its struggle against Russia. And look, the American economy is doing extremely well. Extremely well, she said. Oh, God. And people wonder why there is a currency war going on when the leaders of the of the free world look as regarded and uneducated as that. Uh, a general coming out of the United States uh, making uh, the claim uh, a warning, extraordinarily grave concern, he said over the EU crisis, that the EU crisis could lead to civil unrest. Uh, this on the austerity is what I would think, and the breakup of the European Union. I mean, a, US, uh, a top U.S. military officer with this warning, what do you make of that? Well, I had a chance with, to speak with Jim Rickards last year, just a couple of months ago, actually, about a war games exercise that he participated in not long ago at the Pentagon where the Pentagon is now actively engaging in war games of financial war and currency wars. So the Pentagon and the U.S. military is very aware that credit default swaps and other derivatives are not being used as weapons to destabilize countries. Now, in terms of Euro and the Eurozone, of course, they're going to be the big winner in the currency war because they've got 10,000 tons of gold. Uh, and Britain has 300 tons and America has maybe 8,000 tons. So this is the way the currency wars are going to go forward. And of course, a U.S. general is now talking about it because this is the new front in the global war. It's a currency war. And uh, who would he consult with to come up with a statement like that? Timothy Geithner or the U.S. president? I mean, again, it's just extraordinary that he would say this. He's, I'm sure, aware of these war games exercises that are taking place right now in the Pentagon. Okay. So this is now on the daily intelligence briefing of the uh, U.S. military establishment 
that we've now entered an era of financial war and currency wars. And America, of course, is stupidly spending billions fighting the old, uh, you know, rear guard action of missiles and tanks and CIA interruptions and bombing countries and sending drones. That's yesterday's war. There's a currency war is the new 21st century war. And the U.S. is woefully inadequate. So is the U.K. The German, Germany's got one of the biggest gold positions in the world, and the Eurozone has the biggest gold position in the world, so they're going to look very good in this situation. Max Kaiser, the new treaty, if it's going to work, uh, tell us about the money trail. Where's the money going to come from? I mean, if we're talking about growth, uh, we're not seeing sustainable growth in these economies. It's pretty stagnant. I mean, uh, looking at it, uh, we go back to 2007 and 8, the banks got bailed out by the billions and billions. Uh, so uh, we're also talking about Greece, Spain, maybe uh, Italy, uh, very likely by some accounts. So where's the money going to come from? Well, there is no money. The IMF is bankrupt. The World Bank is bankrupt. All the major banks in the world are bankrupt. So to follow up on Rodney Shakespeare's comments, the system is collapsing. The various heads of states are pretending that it's not collapsing, but it is collapsing, and there is no money to loan into this system. There is a better way, ladies and gentlemen, and it's Bitcoin. It is the bastion of hope, and it's emerging amidst all this malfeasance by leaders, a system that's not swayed by a sinister symphony of war drums. Its decentralized ethos is a bulwark against the brutal fiat bullets and bombs. I mean, there is some profound simplicity in making war unaffordable. A meme with a message that should resonate more than ever. Self-custody is the revolution. And Simply Bitcoin Originals are powered by the Bitcoin way. They are your IT team in the Bitcoin world. They can help you with your journey. If you need help with wallets and nodes, inheritance planning, no KYC purchases, how to buy Bitcoin, accepting Bitcoin payments, collaborative custody, multi-sig, and more. They got you covered. Schedule a free 30-minute call today using that link below. With Bitcoin, we don't just envision a new financial frontier, but a world where the bounties of peace outweigh the booties of war, a realm where the value of life eclipses the cost of conflict and where the clamor for peace drowns out all these cries for war. I got some extra fire here at the finish that'll have you like ready to run through a wall at the end of this, but stay tuned to the finish. We have more clips waiting for you. So make sure you're spreading the sound money gospel. Set those notifications at Simply Bitcoin. We're dropping content like crazy, and we're out here trying to spread the message of freedom, sound money, liberty. Get on the mission with us, and make sure you're following us on Twitter for all the latest breaking news. We're covering everything from all fronts, whether you're on Rumble, YouTube, Twitter, whatever you like, we got you. We also got Sophie with her shorts on TikTok and YouTube shorts, so make sure you're tuning in and not missing missing anything because dimes are coming all over the place. But hey, I'm going to quit wasting your time because it's time to get to this fire clip. All right. Hey, have an amazing day. I'll catch you all tomorrow. And remember, Bitcoin is peace, baby. Let me put it to you this way. It was one thing when you oppressed us with unbelievable taxes. One thing, because we were living in nice homes and still eating pretty good. It's another thing when you spied on us to the degree that you did and made us realize that we don't have any freedom. It's another thing when you not only wrecked the economy, but you fucking did it in such a way where you spent so much money that went to special interest groups that the people never had a chance to benefit from it. And now when you have people that are homeless eating canned goods out of the back of their fucking car, you know what? They may do that for themselves, but they're not, their kids are not going to go through that. Fuck your taxes. Fuck your withholding. Fuck your FEMA. Fuck your IRS. Fuck you. Fuck your corrupt Congress. Fuck your corrupt presidents. Fuck your entire election process. You know, I could go on forever, but let's face it, the world's not going to live that long before a fucking meteor solves a problem for us. So, fuck you, and if anybody doesn't like what I'm saying, you know what you can do. If you do like what I'm saying, give me a hell yeah in the comments.